said if I was going to do TV, I was never not going to be myself. You're sitting next to one on the couch, so let's just say that. Be yourself, but not too much of yourself. Let's get started. Welcome to the Jason Show, everybody. How's everybody doing? You all doing well? I said this yesterday, I'll say it again. Aaron, lock the doors. These people can't leave. That's right. Man. We've had good audiences this week. Uh, let's start with this, everybody. The only thing worse than being stuck on a delayed flight might be this. Being stuck in an airplane bathroom. Uh, <laughs> look at this. Yeah, a passenger on a Delta flight was locked inside the tiny bathroom for 35 minutes. Two flight attendants and another passenger, uh, the, the guy in the hoodie there, attempted to pull the door open. Uh, they didn't have any luck. Uh, then the pilot got involved. Oh, let me get a hold of that. And then uh, yanked the door while the man was inside. He kicked it. It was teamwork. Delta apologized, and this is what I love. And I love Delta, but really, Delta, the man was given $23 in air miles. <laughs> And, and a tiny bag of sun chips. No. That's right, yeah. Cue the music, Leo. Here we go. Tiny bag. Tiny bag of sun chips. Wow. Really? Okay, audience. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for my good friend, Kendall Mark, everybody. I love you. $35. I, uh, I was telling a story in our meeting. That reminds me, and I don't, it's been a long time, but I remember the general details. I grew up in the Chicagoland area, and if you grew up there, you went to Six Flags Great America uh, for post-prom. You went there. That was our amusement park. Mm -hmm. I had a friend post-prom that was uh, stuck upside down on a roller coaster uh, for about an hour. And do you know what she was offered? I'll never forget this. Uh, I hope a lifetime supply of something. A pretzel and a soft drink. Oh! That was it. <laughs> that was okay. it. I was like, no, 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 Bugs Bunny. Because Bugs Bunny was the mask. No, 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 Bugs. No, 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 no. Uh, fork over at least a hot dog and or something. And, you know, a cookie or something. And a chiropractor. And a well, chiropractor. I okay. can't imagine. I'm not afraid of roller coasters. No. But that type of situation, I'm not claustrophobic, that would send me right over the edge. I think I would faint. That's not a joke. I think I would just, they'd be like, is that girl okay? And she'd just be like dangling. Yeah. Like, that'd be Well, me. I would that'd hope that you me. wouldn't faint in the restroom because then we'd never be able to get you. I mean, no, you know what I mean? I would. I would. I'm, claustro I'm super claustrophobic. Are you? Oh, it's like Oh, my I thing. didn't know that about you, really. Oh, we, okay, we were under the Vatican. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I know. Wait, 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 okay. wait. Any story that starts off, we were under the Vatican. Oh. What? Okay. So we're under the Vatican on my honeymoon, and there's this area you can go to where it's like, where the ceilings are like this tall because this is built forever and ever ago, and there were hundreds of people stuck in there because the elevators were out, and there was one tiny little staircase you could go up. I bulldozed everybody. I didn't care. Man, woman, child, elderly, elderly. person did not care. The sweat started dripping Kendall. down my face, and Ken Jordan was like, everybody leaves. You're going to have a panic attack. Kendall, Kendall. What? Can I just ask? Um, yeah. And I'm not judging. I, I mean, again, no, 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 no. And, and again, I'm not judging. Okay. It's the Vatican. I'm not messing around with God today. But Thank you. Most people, when they go to honeymoon, yeah. Hawaii, uh -huh. 
a cruise. Yes. I love that you went to the Vatican. I love that you went. I like art and Jesus. I don't know. Like, <laughs> I just went on a tour. I, I, hey, I, again. <laughs> I don't need lightning hitting me today. I'm not. No. I'm not. I'm not touching that. Don't need the I just don't know if I would get through the Vatican detector. I don't know. I would be. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. Start going out. Exa beep, 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 beep. <laughs> anyway, let's get started, everybody. It's time for the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. Let's do this. Here we go. <laughs> Uh, first up, it is a huge weekend in Hollywood. The Oscars are happening this Sunday. And one big change this year, and we are so, so happy. We've been begging them to do this for years, is the start time. ABC, Disney, my buddy Bob Iger, they really want you to know, really, that the Oscars begin an hour earlier than usual. But what will that mean? Will that mean they might end earlier? Probably not. Jimmy Kimmel, you know, he's hosting for the fourth year. He was on the Good Mornings of America to talk about that. Watch. Can you share anything with us well, about I this year's show? Well, I can share that if you don't remember that we have daylight saving time on Sunday and that the show is an hour earlier than it always has been, you will miss my monologue. So that is, I think, the big X factor going into this particular show. Will people miss the whole first hour of it? To and be I clear... Starting an hour early, Starting. because last year you were joking that you might still be on the air at the Oscars when we go on the air on Good Morning America. That's right. You've and done something to remedy that this year. Kind of, yes. We're not ending earlier, we're just <laughs> starting earlier. Okay, so the show's still going to be long. So I may not have to go to work. You may not, yeah, you may have to skip work. You may have to skip work, yeah. Well, well, this, uh, again, I've said it. Every time we've done a post-mortem on this show about the Oscars, I have said, you know, when I give my list of fixes, mm -hmm. this is always on the top of it. It's never made a darn bit of sense to me. I know people on the West Coast, well, it's early. I, whatever. Uh, it's fine. You'll this, this makes sense because Sunday primetime, right. people are used to primetime starting at 6. Mm -hmm. 60 Minutes has been at 6 since the 60s, since right. it debuted. We are, we are accustomed to doing that. Mm -hmm. And this makes sense for ABC because you put the show on at six, they treat it like the Super Bowl, and they are. It's gonna get done around 9, 9.30, hopefully. Thank and God. what can ABC do? They can put a show after it to launch. Mm -hmm. They're gonna have, a, and they're doing it, they're not launching a show, but they're putting Abbott Elementary on right after the Oscars oh, nice. to get a big audience. Nice. If I'm running ABC, this makes great sense to me. Mm -hmm. I, and, and plus, we need to go to bed. We're I tired. mean, you know, we're tired. Yeah. I wanna go to, I want it to be done before 10. I know. So I'm, I'm really excited. I think that, Plus the fact that movies are nominated that we have actually seen mm -hmm. and that we're rooting for, mm -hmm. I think, and Ryan Gosling is going to be singing, I think the ratings are going to be pretty good this year. I do. I'm just Ken. He is. He's singing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm excited. Me too. I'm excited for this year's show. We can, like, get our bubble bath, put on our terry cloth robe, and then we can just sit there and drink wine and watch the Oscars. It'll be great. Have fun with that. I'm not, I don't bathe. I don't like, I don't, I don't, I don't. I shower, I don't bathe. I want to be clear about that. I was yeah, like, you yeah. might want to correct that. He no, does I don't, shower, yeah. everybody. I he clean myself. Shower. I don't, I, no. Anyway, uh, next in the dish. Make room for, uh, <laughs> make room for some new emotions. Did you hear Jason? He says he doesn't bathe. He doesn't anyway, bathe. yeah. I, you smell me every day. I smell pretty good. Yeah, he does. Yeah. He does smell very lovely. Pixar just dropped the official full trailer for the highly anticipated sequel to one of their uh, more modern big hits, Inside Out. Look. <laughs> It should be nothing but smooth sailing. Hello. Ah! I'm anxiety. Where can I put my stuff? A new emotion. Oh, I'm sorry. We wanted to make such a good first impression. Uh, what do you mean, we? Uh, I'm envy. Oh, look at your hair. Oh, yeah, not happening. That's on we. On what? It's what you would call the boredom. What's your name, big fella? That's embarrassment. Welcome to headquarters, embarrassment. Mm. Oh, we're doing a fit. No. Oh, <gasps> nope. Going yeah. high. Oh, mm. you got a real sweaty palm there, buddy. <laughs> yeah. This. This is brilliant. The young girl from the first movie, Riley, is now a teenager. And you know, with teenagerness comes new emotions, including anxiety, envy, and embarrassment. Inside Out comes out, Inside Out 2 comes out in June. 
after a very rough year for Disney Pixar la uh, last mm -hmm. year, they had one turd circus after another. This is, this looks, this slate, including this, this is going to do huge numbers. It looks fantastic. And it's so good for kids that age to learn about those things. I saw a tweet the other day that just made me laugh. It was about how there's more female sociopaths in the world now. This is going somewhere funny, don't worry. Um, and someone responded with like, oh, are you surprised? Have you ever been to eighth grade? Because that was tough. There were yeah. a lot of mean girls back then. Oh, you know? oh I know. And I'm not, uh, believe me, I get it. I, I yeah. see you. I, eight, seventh and eighth grade. Terrible. All, all of you watching, if you're a kid, you're watching, just know, I know it's a cliche, it does get better. It does don't, get better. Seventh and eighth grade are just the fourth and fifth ring of hell. They it really, really is. Are. I <laughs> PE, you have to undress. I don't know people I I didn't want to undress. I'm like, ain't no one I don't want anyone seeing my granny panties. Uh, I don't want anybody, you know what I mean? I don't and want And like your body's changing. Your body's your voice cha is changing. Yeah. Oh, it's horrible. It's horrible. And then for me, for yeah. PE class, we had to climb that rope. Oh, and yeah. I was and you're getting ready to see I have some uh, this poor woman is craning her neck to see me. Can we get her Sorry. a new chair? She is literally like this. I gotta go over, okay. move her over Jason, here so she can see me better. Yeah, moment. okay. You're having a squirrel. Yeah, moment. I am having a squirrel, squirrel moment. I feel bad for her. Anyway, um, but no, I. Uh, but PE was horrible. Yeah. And it was just awful. And so many emotions, so many things. Yeah, so you many got things. This. You so got many this. things. There's my friend. Before we head to break, let's wish a happy birthday to everyone who came to the show to celebrate with us as part of our Jason Show Birthday Club. They get a birthday pan of sass and up to $20 of free play at Grand Casino. More hot dish when we come back. Back in a moment, everybody. to stay tuned and watch the full hour every day but um, if you today you really should especially if you don't like me because um, I'm getting ready to embarrass myself coming up in what BB 15 minutes mm -hmm. uh, I've been telling you about this search for the VHS tape I've been looking for mm -hmm. well um, it ended with very embarrassing videos of me when I was a teenager and I will show them to you coming up in a little bit but right now yeah <laughs> Kendall hasn't even seen them, no. no. But right now, more dish for you. This is going to make you feel real old. Ricky Martin's hit song, Live in La Vida Loca, 25 years old this month. Oh. Yeah. Ricky was on uh, with Fallon and said he knew right away it was going to be a massive hit. Leo, cue the Late Night Rewind. Does it feel like yesterday? Yeah, it, yeah I mean, because... Uh, because it was so powerful. It was such an important moment in my life. I mean, it was like a before and after living La Vida Loca. You know what I mean? Did but you know it was a hit when you recorded it? Immediately. I, I heard... I, I'm not kidding. I don't want to... I love the weird. honesty. No, I love... I love the honesty. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I don't want to sound weird. But the truth is that I heard the demo. Um, Desmond Child, an amazing producer, and Draco Rosa sent it to me. And I'm like, hold on a second. Wait a minute. This is the song. This is... The album was already recorded. We were about to go into mastering. It was done. And I said, everybody go back into the studio. We need to record this song. No way. And it's Living La Vida Loca. And it was super crazy. Super amazing. Yeah. And I... <laughs> I'm, I'm on the road at the moment with Enrique Iglesias and Pitbull. And I sing that song, obviously. And I get a standing ovation every night after that song. No, because it's part of... It's so beautiful. It's part yeah, of our life. Yeah. As you should. Mm -hmm. he, sh he should get a standing ovation for that song every uh -huh. night. Ricky, the reason you're seeing a lot of him, he's out promoting the upcoming Apple TV Plus show called Palm, uh, Palm Royale, which we so cannot good. wait for. Kristen Wiig is in it. Carol mm -hmm. Burnett is in it. Mm -hmm. Oh, it looks really good. Well, we've got a special serving a hot dish all the way from Hollywood. Friday audience, give it up for Jacob from TMZ. <laughs> Hi, buddy. Hey, Jason. Um, first up, we all, uh, you guys covered this. Oprah stepped away from Weight Watchers last week. She was on the board, but she's not uh, shying away from a conversation that she's been talking about since the 80s. What is she doing? She is holding a special that's going to be in a couple weeks on ABC where she's going to be talking all about weight loss drugs. So as you mentioned, a lot of people had their eyebrows raised 
when Oprah left the board of Weight Watchers a few weeks ago, which was she was sitting on the board for a long time. So a lot of people were surprised about this. And on top of that, some people actually have been going against Oprah because she takes Ozempic and lost 40 pounds for it. You think that that would be a fantastic thing, but apparently Oprah actually referred to Ozempic as an easy way out. Some people have found her to be a little bit hypocritical. But I think the point is that there's so many questions surrounding these weight loss drugs. And in this special, there's going to be experts and doctors who break it all down and talk about how this could be really beneficial to people who have diabetes and other types of health issues. So it should be interesting to see. Yeah, I'll talk more about that in a minute. But next, though, Andy Cohen is uh, uh, pretty real, uh, getting real real, and he's very much over ex uh, Roni star Leah McSweeney's claims about him, and now his legal team, team is threatening a lawsuit. What's happening? Yes, yeah, so if you missed it, Leah McSweeney, who's a huge Bravo star, she's on the show Ultimate Girls Trip, she filed a lawsuit against Bravo and Andy Cohen last week for discrimination. And in that lawsuit, there was a part that mentioned that Andy Cohen allegedly does cocaine with Bravo stars and rewards them, by, if they do cocaine with him, by having a good edit on the show. So Andy Teen has clapped back on this saying that this is categorically false. Basically everything in this whole lawsuit is false, but they have a particular issue with this cocaine claim because they say that Andy has never done cocaine with any Bravo star or any Bravo employee. So they are basically asking uh, Nick Sweeney to withdraw this, this allegation, and if she doesn't, they're going to be taking legal action against her. Finally, a legendary Hollywood hookup. I love this. Rita Moreno. Icon says she once uh, went on a date with a very, very, very famous musician. Who? Elvis Presley. <laughs> so this happened right after she broke up with Marlon Brando, who she was with for a long time, because apparently she found some other woman's undies in their room. So with that, she decided that she was going to leave Brando for the king of rock and roll. So she decided, so it actually what's funny is that it didn't happen with, uh, Elvis did not personally ask her, it actually happened through his manager, where he said, hey, I think Elvis is interested in you. And one thing led to another, they actually went out on a couple dates, and I think she really did that to kind of get back at Brando. Yeah. But the funny thing about this was she actually said that Elvis was too boring. She said this a couple years ago on The View. She said it was a short-lived relationship because I guess he wasn't that exciting of a guy to be around. I'm not gonna say words. Uh, <laughs> Have a good, have a good weekend, my friend. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. My buddy Jacob from TMZ. More stories at TMZ.com. Let me uh, just briefly on the on the the Oprah thing. Mm -hmm. You may not like her. She may not be your cup of tea anymore. But uh, here's uh, this is what I know. If there's anybody in popular culture that can speak to weight loss struggles, mm -hmm. because keep in mind the youngins don't know this. Uh, uh, Oprah was really the first personality that brought weight loss conversations to the masses on television. She was the first public person to really get in front of a camera mm -hmm. and say, hi, I'm, and this is her words, not mine. She's like, hi, I'm fat. And, and she famously, you know, we shared a boss. The, the boss at uh, our company was the gentleman that hired her, Dennis Swanson. And when she tried out for AM Chicago, she famously said to Dennis, she goes, well, you know I'm black and you know I'm big. And Dennis goes, yeah, I have eyes. And, uh, and, and she goes, well, I can't change that. And he goes, I don't want you to. Mm -hmm. And her authenticity on that, on that subject, I think has helped a lot of people. I say all of this because even if you don't like her, I'm gonna tell you, if I get weight loss information from Oprah, I'm going to believe her because she knows what she's talking about because she's been through it all. Remember the fat in the wagon, uh, the drinking of that shake? She told us when it worked and then she told us when it didn't work. Oh, I'm going to watch this special mm -hmm. with curiosity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to see what she has to say about these drugs. And she always is, I mean, she's just an open book. You she know? is. Like, what does she have to hide at this point? She yeah. is Oprah. Like, the, the, <laughs> like the old rumors when, when people used to say that her and Gail were lesbians. Let me right. tell you, um, if Oprah was a lesbian, we know the lesbian. We, she would put it, she she would get in a plane mm -hmm. and write the word lesbian on the side of the plane. I mean, right. we would all know. Right. <laughs>
Yeah, hell of an airline, let me tell you. <laughs> lesbian Air. Yeah, lesbian Air. Um, <laughs> more hotness for you. It's the. <laughs> I would fly it personally. Me I would. Too. Yeah, I would. Yeah, yeah. Me too. Um, it's the buzzy new show that just premiered on HBO. I'm talking Kate Winslet and her new limited series called The Regime. It's getting. Mixed reviews. Now, before I get into my review of the pilot, here's a taste of what the show's like. Madam Chancellor, Corporal Zubak, not nice what they're calling you, butcher. There's a good man in there who deserves love. The Chancellor has a bit of an infatuation. He's not dangerous, is he? She'll lose interest. She always does. Hot. What if this time she doesn't? I'd love to smash their faces. Anyone who makes you weak. Madam Chancellor, let's keep the gloves on. This is not a confrontation. We're just saying what's true. Winslet. Kate plays a paranoid chancellor of a fake small country in Europe. Um, I take no pleasure in saying this because I love Kate. Uh oh. Uh, she's my husband's get out of uh, jail free card. <laughs> Say that again. On the women's side. Okay. Uh, yeah. Got and, it. Uh, um, but I hated it. I, uh, um, I really did not. And the more I, I, Aaron Schwaberini, our audience coordinator, and Bette Midler, we talked about it. This was our face during the whole thing. <laughs> we looked like a dog going to the vet. You know what I mean? And you're just like, you're looking at your owner like, what am I doing here? And Mom? I didn't understand it. I wanted to like it. Uh -huh. I'm going to continue because we haven't even seen Martha Plimpton yet. We don't even, and I never judge pilots because it's really hard to launch a show. But this is just, I didn't know what I watched. Have you seen this yet? No. Was it overly complex or was it just all over the place? Kendall, it just I, it's just weird. I think, I think, and Aaron, I'm going to speak, I think Aaron and I, and I'm, I think I can speak, we're not smart enough for the show. I don't think we are. Yeah, I don't, right, right, Aaron? I don't. Literally what I said to Colin, I think. It's like reading the Iliad. You're like, what is happening here? Everybody's like, best thing I've Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. We didn't have that book in Indiana. Oh, I just okay. say, yeah, we didn't have that book. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we had Billy Elliot with not the Iliad. We didn't have, yeah, we didn't have that. Okay, honey. And calm down, people in Indiana. I'm just making a nice joke. It's people funny. in Indiana are so, get so mad at me. You just make so much fun. I live there. I grew up there. I love it. But you got to admit, ugh, in you the 80s. the Iliad. <laughs> in the 80s, not now. In Indiana, in the 80s, try being... A gay in Indiana. It's like, yeah. Ooh, not fun. The regime airs Sunday nights on HBO. Next up, it's the story, oh, that just won't go away, and we're grateful. Remember the viral Oompa Loompa from the Willy Wonka experience in Scotland? Well, she's using her 15 minutes of fame, you get it, girl, to make some cash. The actress, whose name is Christy. Oh, hello, lady. Okay. I... I could look at this photo all day, every day. Well, Christy is now on Cameo. Uh, you can pay uh, her $35 for her to record personalized videos for you. Best of all, she makes all the videos while wearing her Oompa Loompa wig. <laughs> Photographer Eric, if you love me, we'll order one. Please, we gotta... We'd have really her say like hello one. to the Jason Show audience. It's we can ha, charge Roll it. The open. We should oh, have, her do a roll have open. the Oompa Loompa do a cold open and charge it. <laughs> charge it to Fox. Yeah, you know, charge it to know. Mem, our boss. They'll never know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm up in her office all the time. I'll get her credit card. I'll just slip this. Yeah, I'll get her credit card. Yeah, yeah. What's that? I know. <laughs> Embarrassing videos and more when we come back. Back after this. <laughs> Chevy Chase in that scene in the attic in Christmas Vacation. Coming up in just a little bit, my search for one particular old VHS tape led to some, well, embarrassing discoveries. I'll show them to you. And then a little bit later, Kendall tries another nine to five, and today, she becomes a bark ranger. Mm-hmm, bark. That and more when we come back. So 
remember that scene in National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation when Chevy Chase is locked in his attic and he ends up passing the time watching home movie after home movie? Yes. Well, that's basically what I turned into yesterday. While I was on the hunt for one particular VHS tape that I owned from 1989, a tape that held a big moment for me. Uh, when I met my very first cast member for my beloved show, Dallas, let me tell you the quick little, if you missed the last shows, this was filmed by my, um, my late great uncle Ed, who meant the world to me. He had a camcorder of the size of a third grader, and he knew that I loved the show. And when I went to visit him in 1989 in Rancho Cucamonga, he found out, California, he found out that one of the stars of Dallas was hosting a marathon. And he knew how much it would mean to me if I met her. So we woke up at three o'clock in the morning so that we could go meet her before the race start, because she was a master of ceremonies. I wanted to show you that tape, but I can't find it. I look through <laughs> every VHS tape um, and I own a lot. Um, so I decided to put together, but that doesn't mean there's not humor. Wait till you see my collection and wait till you see what I discovered instead. Roll it. There's my helper in this endeavor. Biggie, you helping me out? No, that's Biggie's movie. Anyway. Yep, uh, I failed in finding the Kathy Podewell video, but there's half a bin of just knots landing. And then this is the big, dusty Rubbermaid bin. I mean, you can kind of get, that's a big TV. You can kind of see how big it is. And here it is, oh, filled with Oprah and knots landing from my old TV station, Oprah. 98.99, Oksana Bayul and Julia Roberts. Dallas, 1990-91 season, episode seven. Um, Oprah, 99-2000. Yeah, I stole labels from my old TV station. Hope they don't arrest me. Knott's Landing, finale, Val's Babies. Val's Babies, but no video of me meeting the Dallas star. Oh, well, I found some other goodies, though. So the main thing I found in this collection of VHS ta tapes is my 15th birthday party with, oh, and there's my friend Chris, friends to this day, in my black and white checkered room with Marilyn Monroe. There's my friend Lori. There I am with my Marilyn Monroe birthday cake and my funky hair. What, what am I doing? Like, what is that hair? I mean, it was 1989. Yeah, we can cut now, we can cut. Okay, one of the things I found was a community service thing we did in Lake Michigan when I worked at Red Lobster as a kid. There's one of my friends, one of my server friends. Uh, we had to do community service and this was at Lake Michigan Park. And look, oh my, Jason, I look like an old Southern woman. What am I wearing? What is up with my hair? Oh my goodness. And then the last thing I found uh, was a 1994 episode of Oprah with me and my mom in the audience. Look at me. I'm wear I'm, I look like I'm going to an interview after that, like a job interview. It was a boring episode about money. Oh, look at my little face. Yeah, that woman was a, a uh, money expert. I would have been completely bored had, I, had it not been for Oprah. Yeah. I was right. Yeah. I had done a class project at Harpo, so it was easy for me to get tickets. Mm -hmm. And I brought my mom a couple times, and my mom and I were sitting on the aisle. And one time we had a good episode. It was with Roseanne and Tom Arnold. Oh. And remember that episode, Mom? That was my mom's in the audience today. And, uh, and this episode was we were falling asleep. And Oprah, at the end of the show, looks at me and she goes, can I lean on you? And I'm like, girl, you can beat me up. I don't care, yeah. So she put her arm on me yeah. and tossed a break in one of the segments. And what is really, and I did not plan this, what's really weird about today is the fact that I was sitting in Oprah's audience with my mom, and today my mom is in the audience of my talk show. Uh, and she, yeah, so, yeah. Um, I also, 
I also, because I just wanted to make you laugh, I found other things in that bucket. I found a RuPaul doll. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> I, yeah. And then you've asked about these over the years. Oh, Lord, I yes. also found my laser disc collection. <laughs> um, this is like Beauty and the Beast. Oh, yeah. um, the Tex Avery collection. Uh, oh my gosh. And then Madonna Blonde Ambition Tour. These were, Kendall, have you ever seen a laser disc? No. This is a laser disc. Oh, it's, wow. So it's shiny. basically a giant DVD. These were, hello. Oh, hello, young people. Um, yeah. <laughs> These were DVDs before DVDs. I can see how they went out of style. They're a little large. How dare you? <laughs> they were great. Sorry. But yeah, it was great. It was so I was bummed that I couldn't find all uh, Kathy Podwell. I'll still look, but wow, that yeah. Red Lobster. There's proof. See, I liked kids back then. I like kids, you know. <laughs> but you weren't talking to anyone. I was talking. I was organizing the games. Sure. Yeah, anyway, after the break, Kendall takes care of your dogs. See how that turns out when we come back. Back in a moment, everybody. They're huge. they're huge, aren't they? Yeah. Well, uh, bark rangers, rufferees. Puppy Patrol. These are the people that watch your pups at doggy daycare and dog parks all over the place. So Kendall wanted to try her hand at your job. But would man's best friend love her uh, like she loves them? I don't know. It's time for our latest Kendall Tries Your 9 to 5. <laughs> that I've ever gotten to wear when I'm trying a nine to five because I'm going to babysit a bunch of dogs today. Right, Kevin? Absolutely. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for being our new hire for the day. I appreciate it. I'm excited because I love dogs, but also there's beer here and I have to know, like, is that frowned upon to have one before you yeah, go Yeah, you're going to need what, what's after we're done. You get shifty after work. Yeah, that's how that works. All right, look, what do you do when you're a bark ranger? you got three job responsibilities. Okay. But keep the place safe, keep the place clean, Okay. and then go play with puppies. When you say keep the place clean, are you Oh, you're gonna, you'll see. You'll see. Are all these the dogs I'm watching? We did an Indiegogo campaign. So one of the levels was you can get your dog on the on the wall on the wall of a bar forever. I mean, so they're up there. Look at little Betty White. That's right. Lots of good ones up there. Oh, cute. Okay. Celebrities coming in. Let the dogs Come out. Come on, Bagheera. Who? Yeah. Who? 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 Rule one. Hi, buddy. <laughs> So that's one of our jobs is when dogs get uncomfortable, we want to get over and we want to comfort them. Hi, Hi Barry. You, Gary. Gary. Gary, yes. Gotta get Hi. the dog's name is right. Bye. Oh. Where's this little guy over here? That's Bear, yep. Hi, Bear. Hey, Bear. Hi. Hi, Bear. Do you want to come say hi? No, you don't want to say hi to me. This is all I want. I thought at least the pit bulls would like me. <laughs> it's okay. A lot of things to say. Not one of them wants to say hi to me. Hi, buddy. Hi. 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 Who's this? That's Louie. Louie and I are about to be friends. Okay, let's go find Louie. Louie? I want Louie to kiss me in the kissing booth. Well, let's go poke our head outside and see if there's any messes for you to clean up. Okay, I'm ready. All right, get a tool to trade here. Are you ever ready for that, though? You know what I mean? Oh, conveniently. Arm yourself. Yep. This is how you arm yourself with this job. Arm yourself. I feel like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, but like with a coat bag. Okay. Come on. Sorry. Let's see. Oh, man. Look at that yeah, down there. Oh, my gosh. You gotta better get that point cleaned up. You're gonna have to blur this out. <laughs> So I think it's putting fresh. Yep, better get to it. Eric? Yeah? Can we go home yet? 
think you gotta clean it all first. Oh, oh God! Emergency! Thanks to Unleash Towns and Hops for having us. I think one of the good things about our show uh -huh. is we don't script anything. No. Eric turns the camera on and that's what you see. Yep. So I gotta ask you, because yes. I know how these things are made. Yes. Did any dog really like you? The one pity did I'm asking come up. for a friend. I know. The one pity did eventually come up and play with me. I have a pity. That's why I say that. Yeah. And she did come up and let me pet her. But I swear, I, it wasn't me. It was Eric. They're afraid of his camera. No. It wasn't me. Oh, well, it could be that, actually. Yeah. Like, the one dog was very sweet. And then Eric would come over, and that dog was like, get yeah. out of here. I think one of the best moments in 10 years is that dog jumping in the kissing booth and jumping right back out. Yeah. That was not scripted. Yeah. That did happen. After the break, it's game time with our audience. We'll be right back. Back. Back after this. <laughs> Welcome back. A little friendly competition. <laughs> well, it is time to test your knowledge of the stars with our version of the name game. Audience, get ready to clap. It's game time, everybody. Here we go. how it works. I'm going to show you a famous face and you have to guess what their real name is before they changed it. I'll make it a little easier by giving it uh, multiple choices. Playing today, she's getting married and she swears she's not on Love is Blind. It's Zuby, everybody. <laughs> She's getting married. It's Patty, everybody. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Patty, look at your finger. Look at your manicure. Look at that. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Hands up, up buzzers. Are you ready? The first one. Faith Hill. Is her real name? That's not Faith Hill. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm, there we go. Emma Stone. Thank you. They are right. I was wrong. I was on the wrong card. Emma Stone. Is it Emily Jean Stone, Elizabeth Stone, or Emilia Maria Stone? Patty. Elizabeth. No, over to you. Emily or Emilia? Emily. You are right. Emily oh. Jean Stone. She didn't go far for that. That's not that far from it. Okay, this is a good one. Next one. Guy Fieri. Is it Guy Fori, Guy Fairy, or Gary Fiari? Zuby. I'll do with Gary. No. Oh. Guy Fury or Guy Ferry? Guy Fury. No, it's Guy Ferry. Oh. It's Guy Ferry. Yeah, yeah. Okay, hands above buzzers. Here we go. Olivia Coleman, love her, Golden Globe winner. Is it is her real name Sarah Carolyn Sinclair? Carol Coleman or S S Samantha Fox? Thank you. That was for everyone my age and older. Okay, there we go. Patty. Hey. A, Sarah. You are right. Sarah Carolyn Sinclair is her real name. Yeah. Yay! It's a beautiful name. Why did she change it? Sarah Sinclair? That's a beautiful name. Why did she change that? Uh, maybe there was one. Yeah, there probably was already one in the union. Okay, here we go. Everyone loves her. Reese Witherspoon. What's her real name? Draper James Reese Witherspoon, Sarah Elizabeth Reese Witherspoon, or Laura Jean Reese Witherspoon? Patty. Sarah Elizabeth? No. A or C? I'll go with A. No. It is Laura Jean Reese Witherspoon. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Next. Michael J. Fox. Is it Michael Andrew Fox, Michael Brian Fox, or Michael Eric Fox? Zuby. Michael Brian Fox. No. Over to you. Michael Andrew C. or Michael Eric? You're going C. to. No, Michael Andrew. Oh. Michael Andrew. It's all right. It's all right. Here we go next. Lana Del Rey. Lana Del Rey. Is her real name Taylor Del Swift? <laughs> <laughs> really, BB? Really? Oh, yeah. Uh, Elena Marie or Elizabeth Grant? Patty? See, Elizabeth Grant. You are right. Elizabeth Grant. <laughs> Elizabeth Grant. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor Del Swift. Okay, that was great. Jeff wrote that one, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Okay. Here we go. Vin Diesel. 
Vin Diesel. What is Vin's real name? Mark Sinclair, Bob Smith, or Dwayne Splane? <laughs> Zuby. I'll go with a Mark Sinclair. You are right, Mark yeah. Sinclair. How did he? How did he pick Vin Diesel? How did that happen, Patty? I don't know. I okay. have no I idea. I don't know either, Patty. Don't worry about it. Okay, here we go. Michael Keaton, America's Batman. Who is this? Was his real name Michael Jordan, Michael Jackson, or Michael Douglas? Patty? Hey, Michael Jordan. No, over to you, Zuby. Michael Jackson or Michael Douglas? Michael Douglas. You are right, Michael Douglas. <laughs> and again, that's another... That was another case of there was obviously already there. Why? What happened? Did just, oh. oh, did they get? Did you give me a little gun thing there? Ba boom! There we go. Here we go. Blake Lively. Is there? Is her real name Blake Carrington, Blake Brown, or Blake White? Patty. Blake Brown. You are right, Blake Brown. Blake, Blake Carrington, by the way, the lead character on Dynasty. There we go. Okay, a couple more here. Faith Hill, is her real name Michelle Smith, Audrey Perry, or Shelly Sanders? Zuby. B. Audrey Perry. B. Audrey Perry? You are right, Audrey Perry. Okay, last one. Hold on to your wigs and keys. Here's the last one. Bruno Mars. Is Bruno's real name Peter Hernandez, Anthony Mars, or Bruno Marsh? Oh, that's a tough one. Patty. Peter Hernandez. Patty, you're right. Peter Hernandez. Congratulations to today's players. You're both, thank you, Eric. You're both going home thank with a season you. nine thank mug. You. There we go. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back, back after this. Thank you, love. Thank, thank, you. thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. It's time to meet our final JVIP of the... There we go. Our final JVIP of the week. Meet Jennifer Hymans from Clear Lake, Minnesota. She says, uh, she, uh, she says, add her to the list of maternity leave fans of the show. Oh. Jennifer still keeps up with the show through YouTube. Thank you. Yeah, we get a lot of maternity leave folks that discover us at that point. She gets a Jason Show mug and enter to win the monthly grand prize. That includes being a VIP guest in our audience, a $150 gift card to Becker Furniture, and a $250 gift certificate to Renew Med Spa. Stay right there. We're going to wrap up the week when we come back. Back in a moment. Just checking. Giddy up. We would love for you to be part of our studio audience. We've got openings next week. Uh, tickets are free. We're not going to charge you for this nonsense. Uh, head, head to eventbrite.com and search the Jason Show and pick a date. You're in by 9.30. You're out by 11.15. I spend time with the audience afterwards. They get to ask me questions, and I can answer uh, honestly. Some of them. Some of them. Yeah, yeah. I can, uh, yeah, yeah. I can tell you things off air that I can't say on the air. Yeah. Um, and it's easy, and especially on Tuesday, uh, we might have a little special show on Tuesday. Uh, we have a lot of openings that day, so mm -hmm. please come see us on Tuesday if you're mm -hmm. in the area. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Happy weekend. Ha oh, that's why you're in a good mood. I know. What? That's oh. why we're all in a good I'm mood. I'm only getting happy hour after this. It's fine. Of course you I'm are. Ready. That's right. Hey, Monday, it's our Oscar, Oscar extravaganza. We're going to recap the big night in Hollywood with our real commentary about the show, the hosts, the winners, the snubs, and the losers. That's coming up on Monday. But right now, that's going to do it for us. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Thank you for watching, everybody. We'll see you on Monday.